Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. Uh, my name is Yafet, I'm MBA24, and I am continuing our Mind, Hand, and Heart series here on the Sloan Admissions IG page. Today we'll be joined by DQ, um, a fellow class of MBA24 with me at Sloan, um, and he'll be joining here shortly. Um, we're really excited to be hosting this session as we continue to highlight different members of our underrepresented community at Sloan um, and to provide, yeah, kind of insight into what it's like to be an MBA student at MIT Sloan. Hey, DQ. Hey there, one moment. Let me clean this. <laughs> Not the best thing. <laughs> no worries. Um, I'll uh, for sure be asking you questions about your Sloan. Your uh, sixty second video then, <laughs> just to get <laughs> just to get how you highlight it. Well, uh, thank you, thank you again for joining um, and uh, being willing to kind of share your story here on the Mind Hand at Heart series. Um, before we get started, you know, I just want to highlight. You know, we're doing this series to highlight underrepresented minority students at Sloan and to really give um, everyone an opportunity to be able to kind of learn the stories as well as the experience of our different members um, so that they can get a uh, hands-on hands -on, uh, view and uh, understanding of what it's meant to, what it's like to be an underrepresented minority here at MIT Sloan. Um, we're really excited to have you. He was a good friend of mine, so this is going to be a pretty easy conversation for <laughs> everyone on the live. Um, but I know you pretty well, but what about if we, um, what if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your story and how you got to Sloan? Okay. So I guess first off, thanks for having me. It's uh, really nice to be on a platform where I can tell my story, kind of like tell everyone like my journey and how I got here. Um, and thanks for everyone who's like tuning in. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely love to like dive into that. So for me, I think my story overall revolves a lot around the military, which is actually relevant since I guess we just had Veterans Day. Yeah. Um, so for me, I actually grew up in a military family. My dad, he enlisted from the, uh, when he was uh, young, pretty much. He wanted to like, you know, serve the country. He wanted to get a job for his family and support. So for me, I grew up every two to three years, we moved around. And I think the biggest thing about me growing up is I had a huge passion towards like education. Um, I went to both DOD public schools, sorry, DOD schools and public schools. Um, a lot of people know about private, public, but DOD is like a third branch that's out there. And so for me, I kind of like saw the differences and kind of like instilled this passion, like, oh, hey, I've realized how big some uh, gaps are amongst different communities. And so ever since then, I always my free time, whether it's at UCSB, got involved with uh, NSBE, National Society of Black Engineers, or in the military, creating like a DOD uh, STEM workshop um, program for those in those schools, or even like when I was at Motorola Solutions, I really wanted to do something for educational equity. Um, and so pretty much that's what brought me to Sloan overall. Um, just really wanted to like dive into that and like expand it outwards. Yeah, no, that's a really wonderful kind of like encapsulation of all the different things I know about you already. Um, and, I, you know, in terms of um, how you approach kind of the application, I know we have a lot of folks here who are listening, who are interested in kind of getting into Sloan and MIT. Um, how did you kind of approach that application when you were ready um, to apply and kind of how did you kind of think through the MBA season? Yeah. Application so, season. So for me, I feel like there's a few different things that I really uh, dove into. So. I knew when I was transitioning out the military about back in 2020 that I really wanted to do an MBA program. And so I connected early on with a few different people that I knew who was actually doing an MBA. One of my best friends, um, Alex, he was over at uh, Berkeley Haas, reached out to him. He told me about the uh, MOT program. Um, MOT pretty much is the uh, management leadership for tomorrow. Uh, it's actually, uh, I think we met there initially from the uh, PD yeah. program, the professional development. And so for me, I was able to actually connect with a lot of different people through the journey, met a lot of other Sloanies who's currently here, met a lot of people who wanted to apply to different schools from like HBS, from Fuqua to uh, Tuck. And I think when that connection alone was like really strong, it put me in touch with a lot of other people who wanted to actually um, go on this path. And I think having a support network is really important. Having a community to kind of like 
encourage you along as you go through is uh, really nice. So early on, um, we have this thing. We currently have it still running. It's a few years going now, but pretty much it's called the Application Buddy Program. Um, we It's a student-led initiative to support underrepresented minorities as they actually transition and do these applications. We dive into different things, such as uh, different workshops from like resume um, review to just looking at your 60-second video to the cover letter and making sure as you go for it to actually submit that everything's pristine clean and you're good to go um it's a organization combined between like hbc hispanic business club the bbsa the black business student association and um abc african business club um we are currently still running it we're uh, gearing into round two so as i went into the application um, each one, I wanted to really show a different side of myself, whether it's the 60-second uh, video, just the lighthearted, like, hey, this is who I am. This is why I do my free time. Um, talk towards that. Um, the cover letter, just went from a professional standpoint, what I am, what I brought to the table, um, kind of like one thing that Sloan says is like, hey, there are big believers in like past performance is a little indicative of like where you'll land in the future. Um, so it's just showing that kind of like my accomplishments in the past. And of course, it's finding people to do my uh, letter recommendation, like previous supervisors. No, and I know you are currently running that as, as well for uh, future incoming students. Uh, do you remember how helpful the buddy system was and why it's motivating you to kind of keep, you know, be uh, leading that charge here as your second year? Yeah, so I think uh, the biggest thing for me is always community. Mm -hmm. Um, I know for me, I didn't get here alone. Like I said earlier, I pretty much got here because I was like standing on the shoulders of all my uh, friends, people uh, network, people at MLT, um, people from Sloan who reached out. One thing I learned, the mantra, uh, Sloan is helping Sloan. It's real and it's a huge thing. Um, and it's, I just love passing that forward. I'm just passing that torch and making sure other people like me who come might be who might be veterans who may be people of color who may be um from marginalized communities that they have a space to feel welcome at and support it no oh, that's awesome i think you know i, I definitely agree with the slonies helping slonies i think sometimes you hear these slogans and you don't know if it's real but i think i remember feeling the that effect of it right from the when i was applying to both getting on campus on day one and to this day as a second year as well so i'm really glad that you're highlighting that experience um i think the other thing i wanted just to kind of keep touching on as we move from you know your life before sloan applying to sloan and when you got to sloan here it seems like you're involved in numerous activities and i think in <laughs> leadership roles uh, across our campus uh both as community developer um, as well as kind of like a leader within our um, different affiliate groups. Uh, can you highlight kind of what motivated you to uh, take those take those roles and what those communities have meant for your experience as well? Definitely. So I can kind of like highlight some of the communities I'm in. Um, so there is like, so I guess one thing I didn't say in my background. So I'm actually, a, I'm Panamanian, mm -hmm. um, pretty much from my dad's side. Um, and so I'm after what team now. And so I'm a part of the Hispanic Business Club, part of uh, BBSA, the, keep saying all these acronyms, kind of like. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to spell it out of me. <laughs> um, yeah, I just imagine like random people, oh, where are you going? <laughs> but, uh, the Black <laughs> Business <laughs> Student Association. Yeah. FLY, which is the uh, um, um, first in race low income. income. Um, uh, community building chair, pretty much they're like the social chairs of yeah. Sloan. Um, the way, so I'm not sure how much to go in depth here, but uh, pretty much at Sloan, there's uh, six different cohorts, yeah. each ocean. Um, so I'm one of the leads for all the six oceans, and I'm also for the Mediterranean Ocean. Shout out to my meds <laughs> uh, for that. And I think for me, I really love getting involved because I love, one thing I was like told growing up is like, you know, leave where you're at a better place than where you actually left. Mm -hmm. And so whenever the opportunity comes up to like actually be involved in these different organizations, I view it as one, a chance to like meet more people to actually build these connections. I think business school is a great chance for networking across the board. Um, you, it opens you up to so many, a wide variety of like backgrounds from like um, professionally, so people in uh, consulting, investment banking, tech, 
tech um, from people from different culture backgrounds, and it helps you become a better, well-rounded person. So I love taking all those opportunities to actually grow and develop as a person. Um, and as these events go on, I just really enjoy seeing the end results of it. Um, just recently, actually today we're having our uh, uh, Thanksgiving event, or like we call it Meds Giving. Um, I think pretty much we have like three quarters of our ocean coming out. We're having uh, actually making mashed potatoes later for it. But <laughs> I just really enjoy making spaces where people feel welcome yeah. and like they belong. So. No, that's awesome. Um, and I know that many of your friends on campus appreciate just the link that you go to uh, to create those spaces for a different topics of the community, both your ocean as well as the affiliate groups. Um, and so I think that's like something that a lot of people really admire about you. I think um, the other thing I wanted to touch on as we kind of move uh, chronologically through your life briefly here is your summer uh, at Google because uh, I'd love to just kind of hear how you approach that recruiting process, how the Sloan, uh, the Sloan programs, uh, both the CDO as well as the alumni network helped you prepare and get into that, uh, as well as your technical background before Sloan, because I think um, you also had um, a technical background from undergrad and post, um, post undergrad as well. So if you could just kind of walk through like how you thought about that, how the Sloan program support the kind of Sloan ecosystem helped you kind of achieve some of your uh, short-term and long-term career goals? Yeah, definitely. So um, one thing I realized I just did not mention <laughs> is one of the other organizations I'm a part of is the PMR yeah. for product management. Um, I'm actually part of the recruiting team for that. And so essentially what that means is as people are, um, looking for opportunities, whether it's in like operations, strategy, PM, uh, product management, um, we try to provide all the resources and like show them how to get there. Um, to rest of the internships. So for me, this past summer, I interned at Google. I was with the core machine learning team. Uh, pretty much, we worked on numerous endeavors from hardware, software. So that's like TPUs, um, software, like AI, analytic, analytic tools. Um, different things to help with the pursuit of core machine learning at Google across all the product areas. So like YouTube, Google Mail, or Gmail, um, search ads. And pretty much for me, I, I feel like I tell a lot of people, I feel like to get there, um, to get to that point, it's a few di different combinations. One, you need to make sure, kind of like applying to Sloan, you need to make sure everything is like, ready like apply mm -hmm. when you're ready make sure you have everything together for your resume make sure you reach out to different people like have them review it have them look at it understand exactly what the role is and the chances of getting there in terms of like what you can bring to the table like know yourself well enough and be able to articulate that to whoever you're interviewing with or at whatever medium like like a cover letter or a resume um so it was a great opportunity overall um, this summer. I loved it. Um, I would love to go back. Still kind of like waiting to hear back from that. Uh, a lot of the big tech companies are in like a um, hiring hiatus um, as they transition through different changes. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. And I believe there's a third part of your question. I maybe just like, like how yeah. the yeah the background, yeah. and then maybe how the Sloan ecosystem might have helped you kind of uh, yeah prepare for those kind of. Pursue, like go, uh, pursuing that opportunity. So for me, my background is, so I went to UC Santa Barbara uh, in undergrad. I got my degree in electrical engineering. Um, I, after that, went to the military for, you know, a few years as an army engineer and then transitioned to Motorola Solutions as a project manager. So for me, I feel like as I came into Sloan, I had a uh, breadth of experience between leadership in terms of uh, um, military, civilian, working with different cross-functional teams, um, uh, trying to achieve a goal, um, specifically across a broad span of uh, engineering. Um, and so as I got to Sloan, I wanted to reach out. I actually, the PM Club, we have different resources, such as we have uh, interview pods, um, last year, we had like groups like five, six, we would get together, do like mock interviews, which is great, which is amazing. Um, the PM Club and Sloan overall, we have access to different resources like exponent.com, 
where you can do like mock interviews, like actually case practice and know what type of questions they ask for these um, interviews, which is great. Yeah. And once again, the alumni network, the alumni network is amazing. I think um, as I found out about different interviews coming up, I was able to reach out um, and to the CDO, the uh, acronyms, the career development <laughs> office. So, oh, hey, all the know. acronyms. <laughs> you know, all the reach out and say, hey, hey, I'm interviewing for this. Um, how can I actually, um, who can I talk to for this? And they connect me with a few different people. They connect me with the uh, Sloney before who interned. She told me about her experiences, how the interview went, how the uh, process went. So I think at Sloan, there's always people, I want to say, I'm like, um, beat this with a stick, but the fact that Sloney's helping Sloney's is like real. Um, yeah. Like a great asset. So. No, that's true. I'm, I'm loving this theme of, that you're finding across both, you know, before you even got to Sloan, when you get to Sloan and post Sloan, that there's Sloney's that are willing to kind of like, you know, extend that hand to help you in your various pursuits. So um, that's a wonderful theme that we're touching on. Um, I know we're almost at time, so I'm going to just ask one more question and let, I'll see if there's any questions in the Q&A um, and we can capture those questions as they come through, if there are any. Um, but the last question I want to ask, and this is the best way that I end all these interviews, is that this series is called Mind, Hand, and Heart. Um, so I was wondering if there's something on your heart these days that you want to just highlight to this audience. So I think one of the big things, especially since this is, you know, the, uh, from the MIT Summit Admissions Channel, mm -hmm. is one thing I struggle with a lot, like, as I did the application to Sloan, did the application to Google, all these different places, is I feel like um, imposter syndrome can be real sometimes. Mm -hmm. I feel like as, you know, people who's watching this, to, like, learn more about the application process, to learn about the best ways to navigate to apply, I feel like always shoot your shot yeah i feel like a lot of the time no matter what it may be is like hey you never know unless you try um for me as i was applying i was like man this isn't gonna work i feel like um my background isn't necessarily like up to snuff i feel like you know these are like some holes i have my application period um, i haven't done x y and z all the other people they have like these extraordinary strengths but one thing um I learned at Sloan is while you're here, I feel like everyone has a moment where it kind of like connect, just clicks and you're like, mm -hmm. no, I belong here. Mm -hmm. Like I was admitted for a reason. The admission staff, they do a great job of trying to connect and really understand each person, um, mm -hmm. who they are, their background, where they're from, um, what really drives them, um, what like wakes them up in the morning, get them, gets them excited and how in the future, they can be like, hey, you know, this is definitely like a MIT Sloan um, alum. And so I think one thing that's been on my heart, especially for this, is just like, hey, um, always look to take that leap and always go like the extra mile and yeah. be able to talk towards it and articulate, know yourself well enough and leave it all at the door pretty much. Just go all, all out. No, I, I love that message. And I think I personally have felt that both before Sloan, you know, even when you get to Sloan, sometimes you kind of feel that. But I think there's amazing communities that like yourself and others have created where those feelings can really be disseminated and you can really feel a part of the community. So uh, I think that's a wonderful message um, to kind of conclude this uh, interview with. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much again for hopping on to this uh, mind and heart ep episode. So we'll continue this highlighting different um, Sloanies uh, as part, uh, a part of the underrepresented community um, in the future. So uh, again, thank you so much for those who are listening now and those who will be listening later. And uh, tell that have a wonderful day.